grinding every day and I did it my way. Black ball from the game, come and catch the way. Waiting on my downfall, gotta stay ahead. Don't just cut me off, bitch, just hanging by a thread. What is going on, everyone? It's Johnny Dunn, and we are back with another one today. Wanted to break down this Gary V clip from a podcast that I'm a huge fan of. Shout out to The Pivot. You know, a bunch of NFL players came together, made a podcast, been watching it for a while now, a few months, and loving the guests that they have on there, a bunch of different athletes and a whole bunch of different people from around the world. Great podcast. Definitely recommend it if you guys haven't heard of it, The Pivot. And I was watching it today, and I saw Gary V come on there, and I said, no way, let's go. So I wanted to tune in and love what he had to say on the podcast. You know, Gary V came on there, and he talked about a bunch of different things, and so one of the things he wanted to break down was NFTs and Fred Taylor had a great question for him. So he went on a little rant and talked about maybe some education about NFTs, maybe his mindset, where he sees it going in the future. And he doesn't exactly mention Vivi, but he does break down NFTs to make you think, wow, Vivi NFTs are going to absolutely crush in the future. So shout out to the podcast. If you guys haven't heard of it, it's called The Pivot. Amazing podcast, so you should definitely check it out. I'm going to break down basically this little clip only. So let's dive into it. I want to get into uh, NFTs because he knows nothing about it. I don't even care, Gary. I'm yeah. pretty, but I'm pretty sure much like um, I'm, I'm trying to verse myself on it even more, right? But I'm sure a lot of people that are watching For sure. are the same. So, and again, it's about seeing others win. And a lot of times you speak about content and, and getting in where you got in you were doing a lot of stuff before everybody thought it was sexy before yes. they thought it was cool yes you know early coinbase yes. investor you invest early in a whole lot of things yes can you break it down to the most yes. simplest i can form i can the nft and i also want to know if your kids had any input i needed it like some of these kinder kindergarten for <laughs> i'm gonna go kindergarten because kindergarten is what we all need right now it's so early right let me give you some context it is early the same age this will definitely help you guys are a little younger but you should catch on to this first kindergarten stuff if everybody understood how the world reacted to the internet in 96 95 and 97 all of this stuff would make more sense just like we've been saying on the channel you know everybody in the community has really been talking about this basically where we're at with the whole nft space this is so similar to when websites first were you know started on the internet a bunch of different websites popped up right he's going to probably talk about this i think in just a second we had Amazon and eBay from that bunch that really lasted, but so many websites were valued so crazy high. Why? Just because it was a brand new website, right? So that's similar to NFTs right now. Everything blew up because it was a new NFT, but we're going to see, you know, where Gary stands on what he thinks they're going to survive from that bunch. Everybody thought the internet was a fad. People shit on it. People never, people just didn't believe social. All three of you should definitely know that. When Twitter and Facebook first hit, people didn't realize it was going to change the world. So first you have to accept that big technologies come along. So you got to get curious. Back to earlier, you got to get curious. The first thing I would tell everybody who's watching, forget about what I'm about to say. Actually, if you're watching this show, listening to this show, spend 10 hours, Google. What did I do 18 months ago? What is an NFT? Enter in Google. What is an NFT? Enter in YouTube. And just 101. This is why Gary's so on top of what is next he just talked about early investor and so many different things He's, he gets on the ground floor and taps in that's why he followed me on twitter he followed a bunch of people in the community and in a bunch of different nft you know platforms and projects because he gets on the ground floor really taps in and does his research does his due diligence and so it's so crucial you know don't just listen to certain people because they lost money, because they made money, really do your own research. And that's what he says in the next couple of clips. One, kindergarten shit, right? So first, everybody who's listening and watching, you owe it to yourself to not just dismiss it because your one friend said so, or because your one friend got it stolen, or they lost some money, or they made some money. You can't just make an opinion on that. You got to do homework. That's number one. Okay. Number two, an NFT, the biggest reason that people are struggling with NFTs right now is they're using their internet knowledge to the blockchain so all of us everybody behind the scenes of this camera right now we know what the internet is we've been living it for 25 years the blockchain's different it's not the internet it's a ledger that can prove ownership what does that mean it means you can own digital shit you couldn't own digital shit on the internet 
for everybody. You could own it inside of something. You could buy a sheep on farm bill back in the day and own it. You could own a Candy Crush thing, but you could only own it inside of Candy Crush or farm bill or Fortnite or Roblox. Just like video games. That's why the video game community is so on top of NFTs and they're probably going to be you know, probably the people that understand it the quickest because they're used to buying skins on Fortnite, like you just talked about, or CSGO or Call of Duty skins or different characters. And so it's kind of like how Vivi is right now. It's that closed ecosystem. But that's the genius behind the whole Ecomi team, right? They made it so these NFTs are kind of hybrids, made it in a closed ecosystem to allow these big brands to feel confident, right? To feel comfortable and confident to keep their nft assets collectibles in a closed you know safe atmosphere ecosystem and then once these brands start to recognize the marketing how much more exposure they can get once they start to get more comfortable with it vv is a hybrid so these are going to be interoperable so you will be able to take them off the closed ecosystem into different marketplaces so that's gonna be big time when that happens or minecraft what the blockchain does is lets you own it to the whole world everybody. And everybody has to accept it so you're owning something and vv nfts are on the biggest blockchain there is ethereum we're on eth that's the crazy part right we move from go chain to ethereum so that's that's the genius that they're hybrids almost i would say because once that interoperability hits like you said they're going to be open to everybody it's not going to just be that closed ecosystem but again that closed ecosystem is the benefit because that's how we're able to get the biggest brands in the world digital let's break this down for a minute the four of us are all wearing nikes only 2020 only 50 years ago which is like every day i make around ten thousand dollars and it's all online it's actually not from real estate if you're someone that's looking to get into real estate let me there weren't branded sneakers people just wear sneakers there no pre-converse definitely pre-nike People just bought five, four, three, two, one dollar shoes and they just wore them. <laughs> Today, all four of our sneakers cost extra than a base sneaker because it's a specific sneaker. That's how fashion works. What, what I believe is going to happen with NFTs is two things. A, an NFT stands for non-fungible token. That means nothing. Just like HTTP or WWW means nothing on the internet. That's why I also said... NFTs is going to be like that buzzword that kind of goes away over time. It's going to be a digital collectible. That's what people are going to start to say. It's going to be a bunch of different things because, you know, it's a technology behind it all. So many different things could be NFTs. But, you know, in the space that we're in with the whole VV ecosystem, digital collectibles is going to be the branding of it. Because, like I said, it's the branding of NFTs right now. When people think of NFTs, they think a crypto scam or expensive animal picture. They don't think digital collectible from the biggest brands in the world. That's going to change over time. It means you own something digitally. Why is the big question. Why would you want to own something digitally? It goes to two places. One, the place I was just going, because people want to flex and communicate. Right. All of us right now, if you look at the four of us, biggest thing. what we wear, what jewelry we have, what tattoos we have, what clothes we wear, everything we're doing right now, hair, hat, chain, sneakers, everything Beard. the four of us are doing right now, was by subconscious choice to talk to the world. Yeah. This is who I am. That's what humans do. That is a huge deal. And it's a frothy thing to talk about with NFTs, but it will be the reason NFTs are huge. The same reason people care about how many followers they have on social media, the same reason they care if they have a blue check mark, they don't own that, they don't hold it, is the same reason NFTs are gonna be big. People are gonna collect and own NFTs to communicate to the world who they are. Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, Disney, Marvel, DC, Jurassic Park, Darth Vader, Star Wars, like. Number two, NFT technology is gonna eat up a lot of functional parts of the world. For example, every sporting event, tickets to the game in 15 years will be an NFT, not a QR code. Resell Why? Value. Because technically it makes more sense. For the league, the NFL, for the teams, the Jags, the Jets, Steelers, and on, it's better for them to issue it as an NFT because if God willing, some... Movie tickets. James Bond movie tickets. Like on Vivi. It's just only the beginning. Vivi's so ahead of its time because of stuff like this. Things magical happens that day. Well, then that becomes an asset. It gets sold. 
and they're gonna make a royalty commission on it. Right now it's a QR code. Go to eBay right now, type in, everybody who's listening, go to eBay right now. I know only five are gonna do this, but you're gonna learn. <laughs> type in used tickets. Just think about that. The James Bond ticket doesn't get talked a lot about because it's a crazy grail. There's only seven of them, right? So it's so expensive. But imagine if there was, say, 10,000 of them. If it's a random movie ticket, it may not be that valuable, right? But say if it was the first ever, you know, whatever. Maybe it's not a movie ticket. Maybe it's a, like he's talking about, maybe it's a football ticket, baseball ticket, and a crazy, maybe it's a Super Bowl ticket. Something crazy happens. Like that kind of stuff. The sky's the limit for that stuff, man. We're a brand new movie first coming out, and it's an absolute amazing movie, wins a bunch of awards, and you have that ticket as an NFT that you could resell or you could hold on to it, add your collection. Hit enter, hit completed auctions, and just watch how much money is spent every day on used tickets at a concert or a sporting event. So for because like this is what happens. One, every single business call we have. Gary V, somebody on the call goes, I know Ryan doesn't care about this. <laughs> Every single pivot business call. Be me. And this mostly for it. Right. And so I'm I'm the I'm the nervous guy with money. I'm the undrafted free agent. I yeah. want to save money. I want to make smart Makes investments. Sense. So I'm a person that doesn't know about NFT, but I know about Twitter. Yep. And then I see some dude buys uh what Jack Dorsey's first tweet. Huge as, mistake. As an NFT, <laughs> huge mistake. For what, how much was valued a certain thing? Millions and of dollars. And it sold for pennies. Because that was the same reason that Pets.com was worth billions. If you look back at early internet, all those internet companies were worth billions of dollars. They all went to zero. The same reason all of last year I made videos every day. 98% are going to zero. 98% are going to zero. 98% are, I like what you're doing, right? I recommend what you're doing. What I don't, rec I recommend what you're doing in the micro. I need you to do 20 hours of homework in the macro. Buying things furiously, like a turtle with a cigar in its mouth for $20,000, that's smart. Don't do that. Yeah. But. See, like you said, like 98% are going to zero. He's been saying that for the longest time. You guys know that. I've been saying that for a while, too. Most of you guys think the same thing. Now, can you imagine the NFTs licensed by the biggest brands in the world going to zero? I don't believe that's going to happen. Right now, we're seeing a whole cleanse in the whole entire market. Stock market, the stock market, everything, right? But all NFTs are down, right? I believe when everything comes back up and we experience, you know, a better economy and a whole bunch of other things, they're definitely factoring in. But when things start to ramp back up, I don't think all NFT projects are going to go back up. No, I think it's going to kind of, you know, the stronger are going to survive. Maybe some of the other ones that have amazing utility or whatever the case is, right? Maybe some might survive. I believe Vivi is going to absolutely thrive when things come back. You know, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong, not financial advice, just my opinions, of course. But I think Gary kind of has that same mindset. Dismissing it because of that is the mistake a lot of smart people are making. Understanding that this is the biggest technology infrastructure we've seen since the internet. For me, back to how young we are, you're going to pay your taxes. You're going to buy homes on the blockchain because it's better technology. Just like we order food now. Like when I said, I'm going to put my dad's liquor store on the internet, every person in 1996 said, why would people buy wine on the internet? <laughs> or even better, I remember everyone's like, who's going to buy wine on the internet? And my answer was everyone. Warning, your AC. People didn't believe when people would actually like put their credit cards online and buy stuff. People didn't think that would happen. Now it's the norm. Tell warranty. For and they thought that was crazy. They're like, why don't I just go to the store? I'm like, because it's better. It's better to buy on the internet. It's why dating happened that way. All my friends used to laugh at me when I told them everyone was going to online date. Because when we were kids, <laughs> that was like, you were a dork. You know, that was weird shit. That was like, you live in your mom's basement. That ain't cool. <laughs> right. And I kept saying, yes, for now. But eventually, it's better. I'm like, I remember telling my friends in the dorm room, I'm like, wouldn't it be awesome to just sit here, lay down, and just, <laughs> and then you like meet up, like, you don't have to put in work. It's better. It's better technology. And that's why NFTs are going to win. It's a better technology for a lot of things. These paintings. Why do people buy an Andy Warhol? To communicate. They want their friends to come over and be like, yo, look at this $500,000 painting I have. You know, but that's a lot of work. And when you want to sell it, a lot of work. NFTs, click, click. That's exactly why I was all in on Vivi. 
like you guys know, I found my Pokemon cards. Shout out to my mom. She found my Pokemon cards. And then all of a sudden, after I found out, you know, I got a couple thousand worth of Pokemon cards right now. I want to sell them. I was stuck. I figured out you got to send them out to PSA. Could take up to a year, maybe even longer to get your cards back graded. And then you got to actually sell them. I was like, this is ridiculous. You know, like just finding this just felt there's got to be a better way that I find Vivi. And I was like, oh my gosh, you can just sell it instantly because the blockchain is like a digital PSA plus so much more. So I was like, wow, this is game changing. And so he's 100% right, Gary is. Click, click. <laughs> so the whole collecting and art thing will go that way. Sports cards. When I, when I want to sell some Fred rookie cards on eBay, I got to list it. I got to post it. Somebody's got to buy it. And then I got to ship it and this and that. Now, click, 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 click. But then more. Fred Taylor rookie cards. I guarantee that's coming out on VV. These are ex-NFL players, retired players from the NFL. VV has that license. Maybe, maybe not. With the NFL PA. Where they've teased Marshawn Lynch collectibles. I'm sure we're going to get the Fred Taylor collectibles. Like, come on now. Importantly, back Tom to why Brady. the NFL will do this and other people do it. There's just so much value in the companies that issue the NFTs to issue them. And we, on the other side, from Maybe. the paper tickets that we used to go and bring to sporting events, then it was an email confirmation. Now it's a QR code in the app. We don't give a shit. We just need to get in the stadium. And that's why it's going to play out. I got to say, half half the fun of getting the woman is the, the chase. Yeah, but the chase because <laughs> the, 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 the Sahara and getting the gazelle. The question is, what's the Sahara? Bro. For some people, the Sahara is at the club and the bar. Yeah. For other people, it's the wordsmithing. The Sahara is the Sahara, depending on how you define it. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like and that's real right now. Right? Yeah. right? And, and, and as you can imagine, for especially we've got a room full of guys, listen, a lot of guys are scared of rejection. And that rejection in your face at the bar pulled yes. you back. But the rejection on online was tempered and didn't feel as bad. You didn't have to do it in front of your friends. And there's always pros and cons. Everybody tries to make like these things like this was good, this was bad. It's always the middle. For certain people, it's better. For other people, it's not. And that's okay. Here's the one thing I would say for all the listeners and for you three. Technology doesn't give a fuck what we think. Whew. Technology doesn't give a shit on our four opinions and everybody who's watching. Shit's going to happen. You know, that's a huge point right there because, like I always say, whether I like we're going into the digital world or not, you know, whether or not you like the fact that we're going into a more digital world or not, it's happening. <laughs> and it's our job to either grab the surfboard and ride that wave or let that wave crash us. And every time someone says no, they're just setting up for a wave to kill them. Wow. So you've given us so much knowledge already. You talked about the things that you develop, company. And then he goes on to ask him questions like, how do you balance it all with your life and everything? So amazing podcast. You know, it's only an hour long, so it's one of their shorter ones. But shout out to, you know, Ryan Clark, Channing Crowder, <laughs> Fred Taylor, amazing group. You know, it's called The Pivot. Amazing podcast. Love what they do. I've been watching it forever. They have one of my favorite episodes. Ricky Williams was on there. Shout out to my guy, Ricky Williams. I hope you got my jersey. Excited to have you sign it, send it back. I'm excited. No rush at all, my man. Um, just been amazing to be able to talk to you and everything. Um, but that was it. You know, appreciate you guys for tuning in today. Um, wanted to make a little video since I didn't do the live stream drop today. And once I saw Gary V on the pivot, how to check it out. I think he's describing VV to a T. Let me know in the comments if you guys agree, disagree. Let me know what you think is going to happen when things do bounce back. Do you think VV is going to thrive and dominate? Or do you think Vivi's going to zero? Let me know in the comments. It's your boy, Johnny Dunn. We out.